This is me in the sixth grade. I was kind of high in that picture. Visine's all you need. Of all of the mental diseases that I've seen, there's nothing that I have seen that disrupts more a family than having a kid who's addicted. It can be drugs or actually it could be alcohol. I just experimented with all of them, like X, meth, mushrooms. Um, it's just the, the one that I liked the best was Bud because it just like, it was, a, it was a calming feeling. Like I had racing thoughts all the time and just chilled me out and I liked that feeling. Yeah, I remember I took 10 caps of shrooms and that's enough to kill you. So I just thought, I was like, wow, I'm amazed that I'm still alive after that. The adolescent brain is different from that of an adult. And that leads to behaviors that definitely put them at much higher risk to want to try drugs than the brain of an adult. They have even less override of their impulsivity and uh, probably from factors that existed before they used drugs and exacerbated by using drugs. Dylan was turning uh, 10, 10 and a half when his father, his birth father, left him. He uh, left without giving his kids any word and then he started to uh, withdraw and get, he went into a depressed state that uh, we didn't recognize at first. And when he was in fifth and sixth grade, he started using at the grade school various drugs that were available and then even alcohol that he could find. And he did this for, well, up to present day. But he used any type of drug, anything he can get his hands on. He was known as a cutter. And, uh, and we found out a lot of adolescent teens are doing that. And uh, he thought it would relieve stress, but it did nothing more than leave permanent marks. And then he started being aggressive again towards himself by cutting his face. He burned his face with a needle. Um, he, he, he took it out on things that he knew he wouldn't hurt people, but he would either hurt himself or material things. If you look at kids coming into treatment, they're characterized by having multiple problems. It's not one thing. Alcohol or drug use may not even be their most severe problem. They may have problems with depression, with suicide ideation. They may be cutting themselves or burning themselves or mutilating themselves, about a third of them do. Um, they may have problems with anger and controlling their tempers. Uh, they may have problems running away or following rules and orders. Um, so it tends to not be one thing, but multiple things. Dylan got in trouble last fall. Basically, he was starting to have rage episodes and where he would, couldn't control his anger at all. The day Dylan decided to break our windows with the slingshot, wrist rocket, he, he had an argument over doing a chore. It was a very simple task, but he didn't feel he needed to do it. So he snuck outside, shot out the windows, and while doing so, I had to go out and confront him. And he was holding the weapon, aiming it at me. I wasn't sure if he was going to shoot me or what, but he didn't. His mom actually called the sheriff, and that was very hard to turn in your own son. I felt like I was, like the world was on my shoulders, like, oh, I am this responsible adult for this child and this kid, and he's doing this stuff, and there's nothing I can do. Less than one in 10 adolescents who already meet clinical criteria for abuse or dependence are showing up to treatment. Now what that means is we're doing a bad job of identifying and getting your kids who have problems into treatment. This is very difficult because it's not one thing. Part of it may be that parents and teachers are hoping positively that they'll grow out of it. Unfortunately, this is a very risky thing to do. It's much more important to overreact possibly. Boredom is a really big trigger. Like, you know, you're just sitting around the house bored. You got a big sack of weed and a couple beers and have a party right there. <laughs> my parents would be like straight up like yelling in my face, like, you know, you fuck, blah, 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 blah. And I'd just be sitting there like, mm-hmm. My mind would just be somewhere else. And I would just be thinking about, thank God I got another gram stashed somewhere in my room. <laughs> He's had one tool in the tool bag 
you know, it's, you know, it's a bad day. I think I'll get high. The sun is shining. I think I'll, my girlfriend broke up with me. I think I'll get high. Kids don't come to treatment and say, I want to stop using drugs uh, because they're the best thing that ever happened to them. Why would they? It's their one coping skill. Ted's 